Hi everybody, this is Deb from D&D &D Art Gallery. This is my first YouTube video. Woohoo! So, instead of doing a pour though, I thought for my first video, and I started acrylic pouring back in October of 2018, I watched several YouTube videos, several different artists, and at that time, I didn't know what materials I needed to get started with this venture. So I thought my first YouTube video I would dedicate to uh, listing or showing you some of the basic materials you need to get started with acrylic pouring um, or painting, either way. So first thing I would suggest is to have paint clothes. Don't wear anything that you would want to get ruined. Um, or anything of value um, and you and sometimes I wear an apron an apron really helps too because you, you before you know it you're wiping your hands where you shouldn't be wiping your hands on clothes that could get ruined so if you have an apron on you'll wipe it on that apron and then once in a while just throw it in the washer the, the next thing I want to talk about is paints and there's quite a variety uh, of paints and if you're just starting out with acrylics I suggest maybe going with craft paints. They're very cost effective. You can find them at Michael's or Joann's, Dollar Store, Blix, Jerry's Artorama, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, or any local craft store. And a lot of times the bigger chain stores will have your um, craft paints four for five dollars quite a good deal so I would start I would suggest starting with something like that and I have uh, deco art Americana and I've tried a local paint also um, it's called perfect pigment but this is a little bit more expensive those first two I named are two of the most common, along with folk art and apple barrel. Then um, I also am bringing out Liquitex Basics. That is used quite a bit by a lot of acrylic artists. Blix, this is a store that's online and I use a lot of the Blick paints. Golden also has a line of very nice paints widely used by a lot of artists. Also Grum, uh, Grumbacher is a pretty popular paint that's used by artists. And what you're going to find is, oh I find anyway, is the paint that I use the most is white and black because a lot of times you put a base coat down to help your paint move around on the canvas. And so you're using a lot of white or black. And so I use the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White and either Flow Acrylic uh, Black or I've also ordered from Blix their, um, the bigger container of the, the black, which works fine too. Okay, and I also suggest that you get on an email and or mailing list for craft stores. Use your coupons, check, check your sales online, and um, if you get on their mailing list or their email list, you'll be getting their specials all the time, and that's really when you want to stock up. Um, another paint that I've used is called Unicorn Spit. This is a very uh, high-quality paint. Um, the dye in it is very concentrated and it's a very nice paint to use but again it's a little bit more on the expensive side. So I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest starting out with the unicorn spit but down the line when you feel a little more confident and everything's going pretty well maybe you could give that a try. The next thing we're going to talk about is your canvas and canvases come as you know in a variety of sizes uh, the larger, more expensive. I've seen canvases three by three inches all the way up to 36 by 48. 
Um, and I prefer to use canvases that are pre-gessoed or pre-primed. That way you don't have to go through that step. They're ready to go. Uh, there are different grades of canvases out there. Um, the first grade or the basic grade, student grade, is called back stapled. And I have a sample of a back stapled canvas here. As you can see, that's basically what it is. They've stretched the canvas around to the back frame and they have stapled it. Again, that's like a level one frame. You can find these Michaels, Joanne Fabric, Hobby Lobby, um, or any craft store would have back stapled canvases though. The next level, and this is what I prefer to use, level two is the artist series and I get these at Joanne Fabric. They're just, they're made a little bit more sturdy. As you can see, the canvas is stretched around a stretcher bar and it's gallery wrapped and it's just a little bit better quality made. And if you're thinking about uh, selling your artwork, I would suggest using this type of canvas after you feel comfortable with your quality of your paintings. Um, this is, again, this is what I normally use. And then there is also a series three that is um, heavy duty professional grade canvases. They're gallery wrapped and they are the most costly of the three series in the one, two, three series. Places to get canvases, again, Michaels, Joanne Fabric, Blix, Jerry's Artorama, Hobby Lobby, or any local craft store. Watch for specials. You can get canvas packs for reduced prices. I know that Michaels and Joanne Fabric uh, very often will have their canvas packs uh, marked down and it's a really good bargain to, to buy those. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is acrylic paint mediums. And a lot of starting out acrylic artists wonder what, what is a medium? They're a little confused about it. A medium is a substance that's added to your paint to change its properties, such as its drying time or its thickness or its texture. Some pouring mediums on the market, um, we, have, we have golden. Liquitex makes a pouring medium. And also, I have a Vallejo pouring medium that I've purchased. And DecoArt also makes a pouring medium. And uh, what, and some artists use Elmer's glue wall and they mix it it's the Elmer's glue wall, and they mix that with water or and or another uh, medium to achieve their uh, paint consistency that they like. What I prefer to use is something called Floetrol. This is a smaller bottle. You can also get it in uh, quite a quite a bit bigger bottle. And what I do is my recipe is one part paint and one part Floetrol mixed together. And then I use something called GAC 800. GAC 800 is a low crazing extender for pouring acrylic colors. And then after I, this protects your painting if your paint is a little thick on the thick side your paint's a little thick or you may get a little bit too much paint on your canvas that you don't pour off this will help to ensure that you don't get cracks or it's also called crazing in your paint and that could ruin a painting so what i do is the one part paint the one part flow trowel excuse me and then I just give a squirt of the, a small squirt of the golden, or I'm sorry, the, the GAC 800. And then I mix a combination 
of 90% water, 10% Floetrol in a squeeze bottle. And I add this water mixture enough until I get my, des my desired consistency of my paint. So that is, that is what I use. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is um, miscellaneous things that you will need to do your acrylic pouring. And slowly but surely, I realized I would need all these things. So I thought I'd just go over them all with you so you're aware of them. Paint brushes, always a good idea to have some paint brushes to help you out. Paint spreader. When you go to put down your base coat, this is an OXO omelet turner, which you can purchase online. It works great for spreading paint. Or you can use, um, I actually had this when I did some cake decorating. This will also work pretty good for spreading that base coat of paint. Also, I purchased some mini spatulas that just help spread paint in small areas. You, want, you don't want to use your big one. So these are pretty good in that regard. Squeeze bottles. I use quite a variety size squeeze bottles for my paints. I mix them and a lot of times I go ahead and put them in a squeeze bottle. As you can see, I have a large one here, a medium size, and then another small one, and a little little guy here. So quite a variety of different size bottles I use. Okay, mixing cups and lids. I just uh, went out and bought at the dollar store some, um, you know, some mixing cups, which helps get your, um, um, your amounts correct. And then sometimes if I'm just making up a small batch of paint, I use these little plastic um, containers with lids. That way, if or if I made a big batch of paint and I don't use it all on that certain day, I put my leftover paints in this and with the lid, it'll stay fresh, won't dry out. So these are very, very handy. Funnel. Um, sometimes if I'm using something like, you know, the mixing cup and then I have a small mouth on my bottle, funnel comes in handy. Stir sticks. I use a variety of stir sticks from something like a tongue depressor to a popsicle stick to this is called a bamboo paddle skewer. And the reason I like all these different sizes is if you're Mixing in different size cups like I have here. You know, I like to use the larger tongue depressor and then, you know, smaller, smaller like this. Works great. Smaller stir, stir stick to the smaller container, mixing container. And I also save all my containers like yogurt or fruit. Any container that you can use to mix paint, that's great. If you want to wash them out, that'll save you a little bit of money there, too. Gloves. I use gloves. Some artists do not, but I, I, do, I do like the disposable gloves. You'll need a pair of scissors. And this is a bamboo, bamboo skewer that I do use um, when I put paint down. And I just if I don't like an area, I'll just... Put my skewer through that area of paint and you know move it around a little bit and improve that certain area that i just don't like the looks of that so that helps out in that regard um okay jumbo push pins and tape i like to prepare the backs of my canvases before i start painting I tape the backs off and then I put these jumbo push pins in. Um, it keeps the back of your paintings very clean and professional looking and I prefer that rather than having the paint um, just you know flow overall onto the back and, and it looks a little messy to me so that's why I like using those items. 
Silicone. Silicone is used with the acrylic paint to get cells. And I've used several different brands. I'll put them all out here for you to see. Of silicone. And I have to say, these two are my favorite. Um, the treadmill silicone, which is used by many, many artists. And then the three-in-one, which I got at my local hardware store. So silicone is added, a few drops, however many you want, just before you do your pouring and you mix your paints, and then it allows you to get those cells. Doggy Piddle Pads, this is what I use underneath my painting then. It's easy cleanup. I just roll it up and throw them away. And you can get these at your local dollar store or any pet store, local pet store. A wet rag, I just like to have a wet rag handy. Wipe my hand, wipe my hands, wipe my gloves off. It's just, it's just really handy and I also have paper towels available, a roll of paper towels right on my workspace, so you could grab either one of those. And I also use a tub for my dirty materials. Here's my tub with all this stuff in it right now. Um, when I'm done mixing paint and, or done with a container, whatever, I just throw it in my tub and then at the end of my session, I wash it out. Everything's good to go. Um, bigger items that you can purchase, you don't, well, this, first of all, let's talk about the torch. Torching is important with acrylic painting because it helps the air bubbles come to the top. And so you can buy a torch like, this is called a torch 400 and they're not, they're not that expensive. You can get them online and this is an item that you will need with acrylic pouring is is your torch a scale there are some artists that actually measure their paint by um, fluid ounces or grams and um, I'm gonna give a shout out at this time to Julie cuts of pouring your heart out as uh, she did two she dedicated two whole videos where she mixed her own paints and they were blue and pink hues and she gave the exact amounts the exact colors that she added and it was wonderful thank you julie i use julie's blues and pinks and it's and they are just the shades are wonderful and here is the scale that i purchased and also if you ever do open an etsy shop and um part of selling on Etsy is knowing how much your canvas weighs and this comes in very handy. You can fill that all out when you go to list your canvases for sale. So that's about it. I hope that you found this video helpful in getting started. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. I'll put in the description below the information on where you can purchase some of the items we've talked about. I do want to give a shout out to the following artists that I've been following pretty much since October. Julie Cuts of Pouring Your Heart Out, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics, Molly from Molly's Artistry, Priscilla Batsell from Expressionist Artist Studio Gallery, Marcy from the business from the business of art and mixed media girl, Helen Wyatt for helping reinforce my personal faith and confidence in myself, Rinska Dauna, Anne Marie Ridenhoff, Gina DeLuca, and Heather Mater Art. Until next video, take care, everybody.